It's estimated that there are over 13,000 active nuclear bombs worldwide. It's considered the most destructive weapon ever created by humans, with power so brutal it could wipe out an entire city or country in seconds. But have you ever wondered how it's actually made? How can a bomb have so much power? Well, today we'll travel to Texas, home to the largest nuclear weapons factory in the United States, where over 2,000 active nuclear warheads are produced and maintained each year, ready to unleash chaos. So get ready because you're about to discover how the most lethal weapon on the planet is made. Let's begin. Step 1. Extraction of natural uranium. It all begins hundreds of meters underground, where one of the planet's scarcest and most dangerous minerals lies hidden, uraninite. At first glance, it looks like just another black rock but it actually conceals the most radioactive ingredient ever used in weaponry, uranium-235. Within each rock, this material is present in minimal quantities. Less than 1% of each stone is truly useful. This means that to obtain just one kilogram of usable uranium, over 500 tons of rock must be processed. Extracting it literally requires moving mountains. Enormous excavators and hydraulic shovels remove tons of rock, while large drills open tunnels in search of this mineral. This process is carried out under strict security measures because although in rock form it's not as lethal, the uranium it contains is radioactive, and if not handled correctly, it could contaminate the area or severely affect operators in a matter of minutes. Once the mineralized rock is extracted, tons of this material are loaded onto large trucks and transported to processing plants, where its transformation into nuclear energy begins. Step 2. Refinement and Creation of Yellow Cake once the trucks arrive at the plant, tons of radioactive rock are unloaded into enormous steel hoppers. From there, the material moves along conveyor belts to a pretreatment area. Vibrating screens and high-pressure water jets remove dirt, mud, and any surface impurities. What remains is pure rock, loaded with uranium, which is sent directly to gigantic industrial crushers that reduce it to a fine, dark, highly radioactive powder. But that's not all. After being pulverized, the powder is submerged in a highly acidic chemical mixture designed to dissolve all remaining minerals and isolate only the most valuable component. The result is a dense, radioactive, intense yellow paste known as yellow cake. This material, though already dangerous, is still very far from having the destructive power of a nuclear bomb. Before proceeding, it must go through a key process, enrichment. First, the yellow cake is converted into uranium hexafluoride gas, a substance that is introduced into enormous industrial centrifuges that spin at extreme speeds. These machines separate and concentrate the only type of uranium capable of triggering a nuclear explosion, uranium-235. At the end of the process, what remains is no longer yellow. It's a dense, extremely dangerous dark gray powder. A small amount mishandled can have catastrophic consequences. Therefore, the material is stored under extreme security protocols and transferred to an even more restricted area. Because now, we are about to manufacture the explosive core of a nuclear bomb. Step 3. Manufacturing the Explosive Core Now that the uranium has been enriched, it's time to manufacture the heart of the bomb, the fissile core. This material is not only extremely radioactive, but it's so powerful that a piece the size of a golf ball can release more energy than 20,000 tons of TNT. In highly restricted areas, specialized technicians melt and mold the enriched uranium into dense metal pieces, typically spherical or cylindrical in shape. These pieces then pass through high-precision machines that cut and adjust them with surgical accuracy. Even a minimal imperfection could cause the bomb to detonate prematurely, leading to uncontrollable chaos. The objective of this process is to achieve the dreaded critical mass. The exact amount of uranium-235, compacted into a solid block, capable of initiating a controlled and absolutely lethal chain reaction. Once ready, this piece is encapsulated in a special structure made of materials resistant to heat, pressure, and radiation. At first glance, it looks like just a dark, insignificant piece of metal. But in reality, it conceals the most destructive force ever created by humankind. With the core now finished, it's time to assemble the mechanisms that will detonate it. Step 4. Assembly of the Detonation System Engineers begin assembling a structure around the core that can contain up to 30 high-power explosive charges, similar to those used in C4 bombs. These are designed to generate a destructive, uniform, and precisely controlled shockwave. 
Upon detonation, these charges compress the fissile core from all angles, applying such intense pressure that the uranium triggers a nuclear reaction. The entire mechanism is complemented by altitude sensors, electrical detonators, safety systems, and calibrated timers. Nothing can fail. A single interference or an untimely vibration could deactivate the bomb, cause it to explode prematurely, or make it completely unstable. Once the entire system is assembled, the bomb is encapsulated in a reinforced metal casing capable of measuring over 4 meters long and easily exceeding a ton in weight. It's designed to protect each component during transport and keep it under control until the very last second. At this point, the bomb is almost ready. But before sending it to its target, there's still a crucial step left, ensuring everything is perfect and preparing it for transport. Step 5. Testing and Military Storage With the bomb fully assembled, one of the most critical stages begins – final testing and preparation for transfer to maximum security military bases. First, exhaustive tests are carried out in sealed facilities, underground bunkers and reinforced chambers designed to withstand explosions and radiation leaks. There, the bomb, without the active core installed, is subjected to simulations of vibrations, extreme accelerations, and abrupt temperature changes, recreating the real conditions it might face during transport. Once all tests are passed, the actual explosive core is installed and the entire system is encapsulated within a specialized armored container. The bomb is then transported in a military convoy, escorted by land and air to its destination. Hidden underground silos or classified military bases with access restricted to high-ranking army officials. There, the nuclear warheads are stored in fortified chambers with armored doors, seismic sensors, satellite surveillance, and automatic systems capable of locking down the entire facility in seconds in case of any emergency. Step 6. Integration into the launch system Once completed, the nuclear bomb isn't just stored in a display case. Depending on the mission type, it can be integrated into strategic bomber aircraft like the B-2 Spirit, Ohio-class nuclear submarines, or dreaded intercontinental ballistic missiles. Each of these missiles can cross the planet in less than 30 minutes and wipe out entire countries in a single second. These vehicles are designed with special compartments and advanced securing systems that keep the bomb stable, safe, and completely controlled throughout the journey. The loading operation isn't an easy task. Teams of highly specialized technicians handle the device with extreme precision using hydraulic cranes, automated platforms, and reinforced anchoring systems to fit the bomb into its exact place. At this point, the bomb is no longer just a device. It's a fully operational weapon, connected to the launch system, and ready for use with consequences that could change history forever. Step 7. Activation, Launch, and Detonation Once integrated into the delivery system, the bomb enters a standby phase. It can only be activated with a direct order from the highest level, through classified protocols, and in this case, with authorization from Donald Trump himself. When the signal arrives, everything springs into action. If it's an intercontinental ballistic missile, it can be fired from an underground silo or a hidden submarine, reaching speeds of up to 25,000 kilometers per hour. If it's aboard a strategic bomber, the bomb is released from a high altitude at the exact point, guided by military GPS systems and altitude sensors calibrated with surgical precision. Just before impact, the detonation system activates. In milliseconds, the internal explosives compress the fissile core from all angles until critical mass is exceeded and the chain reaction begins. The result? An enormous fireball at temperatures higher than the sun's core and a blast wave capable of leveling everything for several kilometers around. A single bomb can flatten an entire city, but several of them launched simultaneously could wipe out a country in a matter of minutes. To this day, only two nuclear bombs have been detonated in a real conflict, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But with over 13,000 active warheads in the world, no one can guarantee it won't happen again. Finally, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? Do you think these weapons should continue to exist? Let us know your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss the next factory tour.